Who are the vulnerable youth? Essentially, all youth are vulnerable. Young people aged 12 to 24 all go through significant physical, mental, and emotional changes. However, despite the challenges, most of them are able to transition from childhood to adulthood successfully. But some young people may have greater difficulties navigating changes and struggle socially and academically throughout this period. Without proper intervention, these youths are less likely to graduate from high school, find stable employment, or sustain healthy relationships. Why is that? There are many factors in young people's lives that can greatly influence their developmental outcomes. Some factors aggravate young people's vulnerability, and some help them to build resilience. Rather than going into youth development theories, we want you to hear Anita's story. Anita is suspended again. Why? Last time she was suspended was because of her truancy. This time she threw a pencil sharpener at a classmate and hit him. Wow! Why did she do that? Because the boy was making fun of her accent. That's not good. Did anyone tell the boy not to do that? No, Anita is a newcomer from the Philippines. She has no friends, and she doesn't do well in any school subject. What does the teacher say? The teacher doesn't like Anita either, and he thinks she's rude and unmotivated. How about the vice principal or the principal? They called her home, but no one picks up the phone, and there's no way to leave a message. Where are her parents? Her mom has been a living caregiver ever since she came to Canada six years ago. She worked hard to bring her family to Canada, and they recently united with her. She can't afford to quit her living job because the whole family depends on her income. She's only home on weekends. Why can't Anita's father find a job? His English is not good. And his work experience and credentials are not recognized here. Can he at least help his daughter? Oh, he's a mess himself. He's disillusioned and often turns to drugs and alcohol for relief. Alida is scared of telling him anything about what's happening at school, because the last time he found out she was suspended, he beat her up. Oh boy, what should we do? Is there someone who can help? Yes, there is, and that someone is all of us. Like many vulnerable youth, Anita's life circumstances are not conducive to her healthy development. She's surrounded by many risk factors, such as being separated from her mom at a young age. She was uprooted from a familiar environment and placed in a completely different world. She also faces discrimination at school, is disengaged from peers, has no friends, has unemployed or precariously employed parents. Her family is dysfunctional, and she has one parent who is battling with addiction and depression. All these are complex issues and require systematic approaches to make a difference to Anita's life. The outcome of Anita's transition to adulthood will depend on whether we can work collectively and methodically to help her offset these risk factors. Together, we can rewrite Anita's story. A settlement agency helped Anita's father to improve his English and upgrade his skills. Their church congregation helped him find his first job in Canada. Her mom quit the living caregiving job and now has a day job. Anita found a youth program right in the neighborhood where she's involved in fun after-school activities. It was there where she was matched with a mentor. The mentor meets with her regularly, listens to her, and helps her to develop her problem-solving skills. With the mentor's encouragement. And her parents' supervision, 
elite school attendance has dramatically improved. She now has a new teacher who is culturally competent and devoted to promoting diversity and inclusion. Her school launched an awareness campaign to teach students acceptance of individual differences. The teacher purposefully engages Anita in school activities and helps her build up her confidence. Anita no longer keeps to herself and has made friends in her class. Other classmates learn to treat her with respect. She's starting to like going to school. Her academic performance keeps improving, and the teacher predicts Anita will be able to pursue post-secondary education if she's able to continue at the same level of performance. Anita is only one example of the vulnerable youth we try to help. All of these youth face different risk factors. We can't change every risk factor, but by providing caring, culturally competent, and coordinated services, we are effectively changing the trajectory of these young people towards a better future. We are teachers, friends, youth workers, mentors, settlement workers, neighbors, classmates, and members of the community. Together, we can help thousands of Anita to succeed.